Anthony back with another video here on Single and Placing. Hi, I hope you're all having a fantastic day, evening, weekday, weekend, whatever you have going on. Um, we are here to do a whip and chat. So um, yeah, we are um, kind of in the first couple of weeks of Drills and Chills, which is kind of a a fall Halloween event as well as the Festival of Witches. Um, so me and Apollo are here and we're working on, or I guess I'm working on and he is patiently watching me. Um, we're working on a canvas for those two events and this is Cauldron of Myrrh. I did a kidding up of it so make sure to check that out. I've also done an unboxing. Um, here is your full-size image there. This is by Ivy Dolomore which is uh, one of my favorite artists just in general, but especially for diamond painting. Um, so we're working on that for this event. Um, this is the second row that you're looking at here, and I'm about three sections in. So this is kind of the halfway of the second row. So um, some decent progress. I've been mixing in some other kits um, over the past... Um, couple of weeks or week or so so not a ton of like super fast progress just because I'm trying to move move along on some other things I've got a lot of whips which we'll we'll talk about so um as far as items that I have with me here let's see we've got our um, obviously our canvas this is a, a sticker from Ivy Dolomore. Um, it's one of her um, stickers from her Etsy shop. So that little, that witch is keeping us company here as well. Um, I've got my pen from Norse Alchemist. I've got my washi tape from the washi tape shop. It doesn't really match this canvas it, from a theming standpoint. This is like a phoenix print, but I liked the purples and stuff and I wanted an excuse to use my washi tape from the washi tape shop. Um, and then as far as trays go, I have um, my Mooney Made tray here with a couple of um, a couple of cover minders from Nomadi Q Clay or Ruby Q's Etsy shop there. I'll put links for all of this below, but this is actually a custom tray that I ordered from Mooney Made. It says Halloween 2022, and it's this color changing kind of witchy green and then the black stardust or the black glitter top. I thought it looked like a witch's uh, skin and hat. <laughs> um, so I ordered this for um, Halloween this year. So um, got and it's got the little matching purple glittery stopper. So anyway, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just pick our first color. Um, F I believe is 40. Um, so yeah, I just got back a couple of days ago from my little vacation, so definitely want to talk about that, give you updates on all the um, diamond painting stuff going on, um, and then, yeah, just some general updates. Not exactly sure how long this one will be. Um, I always say that, and then I end up being really long-winded, but I am still kind of recovering from travel, and um, I actually was not feeling super well leading up to my trip, and I think you know, obviously I felt better by the time I left, um, but I'm still kind of in, I think, recovery mode. I have like little, you know, moments where I'm coughing and, you know, after you're sick, you're like hacking up stuff and just like clearing it all out. So I'm kind of like at the tail end of that, but it still happens a little bit. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is like the recovery from this is just dragging on and on. But I tested negative for uh, the you-know-what, so I think it was just a normal cold, but um, I haven't had one, knock on wood, in a long time, and it just hit me, like, it just got me, so, um, so I'm still just kind of, like, still a little bit of a scratchy voice, and just, like, it's just taken a little while to bounce back from this one, so, um, anyway... Make sure to leave in the comments how you're doing, how your wrap up to summer has been going, all that stuff. Oh, this, I forgot that this tray is also color changing. So you can see it's got that like yellowish, more limey green. Um, it's cool. It's, I, I'm really having fun with the, with the uh, Mooney made trays that I picked up. So, um, so yeah, I guess, um, vacation was an absolute blast. I had such a good time. Um, so my roommate, uh, watched Apollo so he just got to stay home I didn't have to board him although I might board him because I heard uh, next time because um, I guess he got into some trouble but he's just like 
He's just an ornery little, you know, seven, eight month old puppy. And that's just kind of the name of the game. But I got back and they're like, yeah, he had his moments. And I was like, I'm sure he did. He always does. So that should be no surprise. But um, generally he did well from what I understand. He just, he had a couple moments, but he's hanging out now. I, I think part of it was that's the first time we've been separated for longer than a day. So I think maybe he was also just anxious because you know, that's the first time that he's had to be away or be without me. So I think my, some of it might have been acting out because of that, um, because he's definitely, I haven't had any issues with him um, since, since I got back. So of course he's still ornery, but nothing major. So I think he, I think we're back to normal. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> so yeah, leading up to leading up to the trip and you you can hear it in a couple of my uh, videos prior to this this one going up if you listen to like the the two or three videos before this one um I was actively sick during those because that was before my trip um and so I just had like a sore throat and I was coughing it was like a legit cold like I haven't been like sick sick like that in in a while and so um the luckily our flight wasn't until like early evening on Saturday this past Saturday um so I had that entire day just to like regroup so I just like slept I had I already had the majority of my stuff packed and I honestly didn't need to bring a lot so I just slept and like took a bunch of NyQuil and Alka-Seltzer cold and all that stuff the night before and that morning and started feeling so much better um and I don't think I was even like actively like sick, sick, like even that day before I was kind of getting over it. But you know, when you're just like so drained from being sick, cause I got sick that Monday. So it was like Monday through to Saturday. Um, you're just kind of like drained and exhausted and like, it was just, you know, but luckily I was feeling better and definitely wasn't, you know, contagious or anything. I was just kind of, just kind of tired you know and exhausted so I was like I'm gonna be going to this trip so tired but luckily on Friday night going into Saturday I started to feel a lot better from an energy standpoint and I'm so glad because I if I had been like just like completely drained I don't even know if I would have gone because I'm like what am I gonna do just lay around <laughs> the whole time and be tired and miserable so my buddy was like come on, like, you know, encouraging me to go still, you know, because I went with him. And so I went, um, you know, obviously masked up the entire time, um, which was kind of weird because at the airport, like, it was kind of like a 70-30 split, 70 people not wearing face covering and like 30% were. And I almost felt kind of like the odd man out being all masked up, but I just didn't want to risk like, if there, I had any germs to give or anything like that, I didn't want to do it. So like, um, my buddy at the airport, he got, he got, um, a couple slices of pizza and a beer and I didn't eat or drink anything until we got, until we got to his parents' house. Cause I was like, I'm not taking this thing off. So, um, yeah, so we, it was a direct flight to Boston from, uh, from Denver. Let's see, I'm looking for letter A which is, uh, ba, 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 where are you, A46, okay. Um, straight shot, which was really nice. It was like a three hour flight into Boston. And originally his plan was to like take the bus and then the, you know, then the train or the, whatever, I don't know. We were gonna take public transportation. And then I was kind of pushing back, like let's rent a car. I don't wanna have to like deal with all that, especially since we landed at like, seven something so by the time you um because he checked a bag for both of us um by the time you get your bag and everything it was already like eight a little bit after eight and I was like trying to figure out public transport all the way um you know down to where his family lives it was gonna be you know it was gonna be a little bit of an ordeal well his mom ended up offering to pick us up and then his parents have um, two vehicles. So like, we'll just share a vehicle for the time that you're here and you can take either the car or the truck. So they made it really easy for us. Um, so his family lives in um, Narragansett. And so basically, it's like an, it was a little over an hour drive into Boston, you have to go up through Providence and then up into Boston. Um, so 
they live like it's technically Narragansett, but it's a it's a little bit uh, it's like just a few minutes in inland, I I guess. So it's hard for me to like decipher exactly directions and stuff. But um, I I considered it like pretty close to like Newport area ish, I guess. Um, the 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 beach. So that's where his his parents live, um, and then they have a beach house that's been in the family for a long long time, and it's near Point Judith is I think was what it's called. Um, so they have a beach house there, um, the beach that they go to is called Scarborough, and that's, like, within walking distance to the, uh, to the beach house. So, um, if you're from that area or familiar with that area, that's kind of where we were staying, is, like, a three-minute walk to the Scarborough State Beach. <laughs> so, um, it was fantastic. Oh, it was so fantastic. Um, so we get there his mom picks us up, they take us to, or she takes us to a pizza place, even though uh, uh, my buddy was like, I just had pizza for lunch, but it was literally like kind of the only thing open at that, at that time. Uh, Cause by the time we got the bags and got out of Boston and uh, got into like the Providence area, you know, you're looking at, you know, close to 10 o'clock, you know, 9 45 ish. So there was a little pizza place that they really liked. So we stopped there and got pizza and like, had a couple slices in the car and then um and then when we got to their house in Narragansett we had pizza and hung out I've never met his parents before they were super super sweet they're um both semi-retired and um they remodeled or yeah I guess restored this um this house in Narragansett and it was just gorgeous it was beautiful so we hung out with them for a little bit and then they gave us, we ended up going with the car um, instead of the truck. So we took the car down to the beach house. So it's like a, about a 15 minute drive to the beach house. Um, got all unloaded and settled. So by the time we're, by the time we had chatted with his parents and did all that, now you're talking like 11 o'clock at night, 11, 15. And he was like, let's go to the beach. Let's go swimming. And I'm like, oh my God, like. I just, okay, fine, fine, fine. Like, <laughs> and he hasn't been down there for summer. That's where he was born and raised, but he hasn't been down there for summer months in a number of years. He usually goes for Thanksgiving or Christmas. So he, he was just so excited to like be back in his stomping ground during like the, the good part of the year, you know? So he's like, beach. So <laughs> middle of the night, we get our stuff and I'm like all tired just from traveling. And we went and played in the water for a little bit. And it was just like, I haven't been uh, near a beach in quite some time. Um, I guess, you know, technically I went to uh, Oregon last year for a road trip um, and went to the beach, but I didn't get in the water. I just like walked around the sand. So this was the first time I've been like swimming in the beach in a long time. So it was a ton of fun that night. We just like hung out and then we just went back to the beach house and watched TV uh, for a little bit, and then I went to bed. It was a pretty late night, but it was, like, that weird thing where you're, like, so tired, but, like, it's almost like you're too tired to go to bed. I don't know how to describe it, but we ended up going to bed around, like, 1, one thirty, and just sleeping in, and then the next day, um, um, was, uh, Sunday, and, we got to hang out with his uh, his family a little bit, or his mom and dad a little bit, but then we kind of just went down and hung out at the beach and like swam around. And um, and it was, I mean, it was Labor Day weekend, so the beach that morning was pretty, pretty, pretty busy, but not like overly busy. It was like kind of middle of the road. And he actually said it was fairly quiet for that time of year down there because that's usually kind of the last hurrah of the season um but I got Dell's lemonade which is like a Rhode Island thing it's kind of like a lemonade slush kind of thing and it's kind of crazy to me that they have like standalone businesses that are just that like they just sell that lemonade in a bunch of different flavors and I'm like you mean to tell me that there is enough business to keep these standalone partially frozen lemonade shops like keeping this going like that's all they sell is that and maybe like they'll have like a thing of 
hard pretzels you can get like a pretzel or something i don't know maybe some of them are actual restaurants that have like hot dogs and stuff but they sold them like there is people that kind of franchise them at the beach so there's like a little person on a like with a stand but then there's actual like almost like a dairy queen where you like walk up and order um but it was so freaking good i got one at the beach he's like yep that's on the list is to try that and then coffee milk was also on our list which i didn't get to try um but i can order it so i'm gonna order the syrup but um let's see i'm looking for number two uh so yeah we just played on the beach and hung out all sunday um for the most most part of sunday and then um one of his buddies from college oh i'm gonna sneeze one moment okay let apollo out while blowing my nose and then got him a bone so now we are good to go um but yeah so um hit, uh, my buddy's friend from college was actually in town even though they went to college in pittsburgh and his buddy is from new york um, his girlfriend, actually, her family's from Providence. So he just so happened to be in town or in Providence. And so um, he was like, oh, it'd be cool to hang out with you guys um, at the beach house for a night. And then the next night, um, you we can, you know, if you guys don't mind, my, you know, if my girlfriend stops by, blah, blah, blah. So, um, so he came with us to the beach on Sunday and then that afternoon, after we were done playing on the beach all, pretty much all day, um, we went over to my buddy's parents' house and they had some family over. So I got to meet his like aunt and uncle and cousins and all that stuff. And uh, his uncle is like so sweet, very, very nice. And he, but he's like very like new england like he's just like an older guy and he's got the you know i don't i don't know if it's appropriate that you call accents because like everything's an accent depending on where you're from but yeah he's just got that he's got that like kind of new england manner of speaking i suppose and it was just so like he was just so quintessential and like what i imagined and i was like oh he is so cool so they were a blast we had a lot of fun basically just you know hung around and ate and had some wine and stuff and then um so his friend my buddy's friend from college came with us to that and then we went back to the beach house afterwards and once again got changed and went swimming again and then kind of came back to the beach house and it's in this really cool little like community essentially and so um the little beach houses are like, you know, one, two, three bedroom kind of cottages almost is what I, you know, more, most associate them with. And the, like, you drive up and it's like, it, it the main, the main drag is paved, but then everything else is like a combination of like grass and sand. Um, so you like to park, you just kind of drive on the grass to the front of your cottage and they're all kind of lined up and it's very quaint and like very beachy, you know, it's, it was so cool. I've never really experienced anything like that, you know, being from Colorado. So, um, so we just kind of hung out that night. And then the next morning, um, we went and there's Dunkin' Donuts everywhere there. So we went to Dunkin' Donuts more than I think I've gone in my entire life. We went like four times, like his parents, there's one morning that we hung out with them and that, oh yeah, so we'll get there. But um, so yeah, went to Dunkin' Donuts that morning, got coffee, um, his friend from college wanted, like, a bagel sandwich thing, and we were just waiting for his girlfriend to show up, because her family was driving her down from Providence. Um, so she met us at the beach house, um, and then we booked, the day before, we booked, uh, tickets on the ferry to, uh, it's called Block Island, so it's just this island that's about an hour ferry ride from um from point judith i believe i think it's the yeah i think it's the uh the little harbor there that they take off from so we um we went there and the ferry ride was so much fun and I, once again it's just been so long since i've been like on open ocean and uh, it was just a blast and it was a really nice day 
Um, and then it started to get gloomy and overcast and rainy, but it didn't rain on Block Island. The storm kind of went right around it, but it was raining on the mainland. So we didn't see any rain until we took the ferry ride back and like got back to, um, got back to, uh, like the main, main area. Um, but yeah, we went out there. So this was on Labor Day. So we went out to Block Island and walked around. It's very, very quaint again, just like kind of you know, seaside little island town, um, look kind of touristy. And then we walked up to this, um, hotel. I forget what it's called, but it's, it's really pretty. It's like a white, white hotel with like kind of the reddish orange roof. Um, and it's like got beautiful ocean views. It was a little hoity toyed, I think. Um, but we went and had lunch there and, uh, we had, oh my gosh, what did we have? We had uh, all the seafoods. We had like, um, they call them stuffies. And it's like basically like a stuffed stuffed clam, I think. Yeah. Um, and then we had fish and chips and uh, calamari. And um, I forget, we had, I had one other thing that was fish related. I don't remember, but yeah, just a bunch of seafood, and it was just a beautiful, they had us outside kind of on, it's like a wraparound porch kind of deck thing, and they had us on the side facing the ocean, and we just sat and had a nice lunch and hung out, and then um, his buddy, they needed to get back on the road because they live in New York and they were driving back, so they took um, the ferry um a, after lunch and then me and my buddy stayed on Block Island for another couple hours because the ferry runs pretty much all day um, so you can catch one pretty much every hour if not every couple hours so we stayed for a couple more hours and just walked along the shore and checked out a couple of the other hotels and um, and then headed back in and took the ferry and then like I said when we got back it was rainy um, so by the time we got back um, he, they, we were hungry again. <laughs> um, so we went back to the beach house and hung out for a little bit. And then he was like, let me see if this what restaurant is open. And it was, and it's, uh, this place, it's called Aunt Carrie's. And it's the, it's a little like clam shack, essentially, uh, right on the water, right on the beach. Um, and that's where he used to work, uh, during the summers when he was in high school and even in college when he'd come home for summer break it was kind of like the kids' place to work, I guess, in that area. It was Aunt Carrie's. So we went over there and had clam strips, and then they have these things called um, clam cakes. And it's like, I was envisioning like a crab cake, but it's not really a crab cake. It's more like just like a dough ball with like a couple of pieces of clam stuck in it. It sounds weird and it is weird. It was very heavy. Um, so I had like half one. I'm like, I don't think I could eat this whole thing. He's like, yeah, it's, it's a lot. And so, um, and his dad was talking about it. He's like, yeah, I get those like once a, once a summer. That's like my summer treat. He's like, you can't, you can't be eating those all the time. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think you, you should be. Um, but I got uh, the combo, so it came with uh, three clam cakes and a uh, chowder, a clam chowder, and I had my choice between clear, uh, which is like a Rhode Island thing, like a clear chowder, uh, white or red. I got the regular, just white, the, the creamy kind, and he's like, some people dunk it in the chowder, so I tried that, and it actually was better. Um, but yeah, it was definitely an experience for sure. Um, so we got that and then same thing as the other days, just, you know, played around in the ocean a bunch. And um, it was started to get a little cold and rainy that night, but we still walked around. We just got bundled up and um, uh, his dad gave me a rain jacket to borrow. And so we just walked around the beach, hung out. Um, and then the next day, once again, it was sunny for like a little bit, but then the clouds just kind of kicked back up and it started sprinkling. But his parents were like, well, since, you know, you guys can't do a beach day, which we could have, it would have just been cold. Um, and, but, and, and everyone kept saying, oh, you know, it's a bummer that, you know, it, you only got like the two days of, of good weather. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted that like 
that kind of gloomy New England morning and I wanted to sit, stand out there and smell the like, you know, the salt of the ocean with like a coffee and just feel very New England. Like I wanted to experience that and I got, I got like both. I got the sunny kind of summer fun and then I got my like two days of gloom and got caught. We made coffee there at the beach house and I just like stood back there and listened to the ocean. Um, and I'm like, this is exactly what I was hoping I'd get out of this trip. And so his parents were like, well, since you guys can't do that, let's let's drive into Newport. Um, so we met them in Newport and we went to the um, International Tennis uh, Museum that's there in Newport. And so they have grass tennis courts there and it's just this beautiful, gorgeous building. Um, if I can remember, I will, I, I will at the end of this whip and chat, I'll throw in some pictures just so people can see. Um, just a couple of things. Um, at least the beach house for sure. So I'll throw those in at the end. So stick around for that. Um, so we went into Newport, saw the like Kennedy's house that they had or they have or had out there. There's a bunch of like historical mansions and stuff that you can tour. Um, but we ended up just after we went to the museum, we just drove around a little bit um, up and down. I think it's called like Ocean Drive or Ocean Avenue. And then we stopped at one part of the, on like Ocean Drive where it kind of starts to curve and the houses start to fade away. And it's just like open, just the ocean and you're driving right alongside it. We stopped there just cause it was very picturesque and like we're hanging out and there just so happened to be like a little food truck there that had like some pizzas and sandwiches and stuff. So we got, cause I think we just had had Dunkin' Donuts that morning, um, which was like the second time of that trip. Um, and so we just got that and then, um, got back to the, uh, the beach house and tried to go swimming again, super cold, but we did, we splashed around for like a little bit, but it was just really cold. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, just kind of made it a, made it an easy night. Um, and then the next day we, um, oh, actually that's a lie. <clears throat> after Newport, we went, I'm so sorry, I'm like hacking up a lung over here. Um, after we went to Newport, we went back to the house, flashed around a little bit or tried to. And then that was the night that we had dinner reservations with, um, with his parents. So there's this restaurant that's called, oh my God, I'm going to, I kept saying it wrong and I'm probably going to say it wrong again. Is it Mat Matunic? Matunic Oyster Bar, I think is what it's called. And it's in Narragansett. And it's like a fancy, fancy restaurant. It was like going to be our like night out, you know, or like nice dinner out. And so it's this gorgeous restaurant right on the water. And they actually have their, it's like they have their little bay and they actually harvest their oysters and, and some other seafood right there from behind the restaurant. And they also have a little farm there on the property as well, where they grow all their, a lot of their seasonal vegetables. So it's like a lot of that stuff's growing right there, um, both the seafood and the veggies. So it's like the kind of place that they only do valet and, you know, it's that kind of place. And I was like, do I need to get dressed up? Cause I brought a nice, a nice outfit, a button up. And they're like, no, it's, it's beach. It's summer. Like it'll be fine. And I was like, well, I'm still wearing my nice shirt. I mean, I packed it. I brought it all the way here. I'm going to wear it. So I had that and some nice slacks. And, and I mean, they said it wasn't dressy, but they were still dressed nice and there was a lot of people in there with like, you know, they're like beach wear, but dressy beach wear, you know, like um, kind of linen pants and the in the suit, the blazer is that kind of place, you know. Um, and so we got his mom and I shared um, this gr like grilled oyster, like medley kind of thing as an appetizer. And then him and his dad got calamari, but it was like... Um, delicious like grilled oysters and then they had one that was like a bourbon one and then one that was kind of like dressed up a little bit with like a like a breading you know um so we had that and then um I got the lobster roll because I hadn't had lobster yet and then they had you could get you know your normal fries or something but then they had this goat cheese and beet salad and all the stuff was growing there the beets and the um, the leafy greens were all growing there at the restaurant or on the property. And it was to die for. It was so, 
good. It was it was by far the best meal I had there, uh, mainly because it didn't involve like a bunch of fried stuff. Um, but it was so good. And then we got this um, shortcake with uh, seasonal berries. Um, once again, I think some of that was growing there. Um, it was it was like their specialty, like summer dessert. It was so good. We all kind of took bites out of it. But it was amazing and it was so much fun. And his parents were such good hosts. I need to I need to um get their address so I can send them a thank you note. Um but yeah, it was fantastic. Fantastic. It was amazing. So then that's when that night we went back to the beach house and just I was in a food coma. But we stopped at his parents' house um, before, like, because they live basically just a few minutes away from the restaurant. So we stopped at their house and had a glass of wine and just chatted for a little while. So it got pretty late by the time we got back to the, the beach house. And then the next morning was my last morning there. Um, went out swimming again because the, it, it, the weather did clear up a little bit. It was still, like, overcast, but it wasn't raining. Um, so we... Went out to the beach again, went for a swim, um, and just kind of took it easy. I packed up. Um, I went to bed, you know, granted, we were having late nights every night, but I went to bed earlier than what I had been that night. So I woke up with a pretty good spring in my step, and I think uh, my buddy stayed up late and watched TV and stuff after I had gone to bed. Um... I keep grabbing new trays because I'm like, I'm bored with this color, but I am. So I'm going to switch trays again. Um, let's see here. Ooh, so I haven't filmed this unboxing of these Mooney Made trays, like that Halloween one. But this one's a well, custom that I got that says single in placing. Woo, 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 woo. Um, it's, and it's beautiful. This color palette is gorgeous. Um, so kind of had an easy morning. Went and got breakfast, walked around a little bit. I, I really didn't want to go. I should have taken the entire week off because he stayed the full week, Saturday to Saturday, and I left on Wednesday um, early evening. So um, let's do, I guess we'll do the four, why not? Um, so had kind of a, a lazy morning, and then he drove me back up to Boston for my flight. Um, and we stopped, I forget where we, where we stopped on the way. I don't know if we stopped and got lunch or just did coffee. I don't remember what exactly what all transpired for that, but we, I got to the airport super early. We were kind of worried with traffic and stuff, but it ended up moving really quickly. Um, I think cause it was the middle of the day, um, and a weekday. Um, so things moved really quickly. And so I got to the airport like a good hour and a half, almost two hours, uh, to spare, um, because I just like breezed right through security. So I sat down and had myself, um, a snack. They had like a little bar right there next to my gate. So I had myself a snack. I kind of got caught up on responding to YouTube comments because I was it initially had intended on doing like a vlog, um, while I was there and like vlogging to share that, um, on the channel. But just with like the amount of like water and ocean that was involved in sand. I was like, yeah, I'm not getting my phone out. And half the time I just left my phone at the beach house. So I, and, and I mentioned it to my buddy. He was, he seemed begrudgingly okay with me filming, but I think he just was like, I don't think he was that into it. And I kind of just wanted to make it a, a trip and not folk, not be like, oh, hold on, let me, this is a memory. Let me get my, you know, let me vlog this. And it, there just wasn't a right time. So I took some videos, obviously, but nothing of me like, hi guys, it's me in, in Newport, like nothing like that. I took some videos just of like pretty stuff, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, popped me on, the, uh, you know, dropped me off at the airport and then he, um, just got back today. I picked him up not too long ago, ran over to the airport and snagged him, but he spent the rest of his trip just with his family, just to do family stuff. They went and did tennis and just hung out at the, at his parents' house. So I'm kind of glad, you know, part of me want, wish, like wanted to stay, but also part of me was like, this is kind of nice because then he actually gets to spend like some one-on-one -on -one time with his parents. He only sees them like, you know, usually just during like the Christmas holidays or they'll come up to Denver in the summer. So 
it's the first time he's been out there in that time, like during that part of the year. And he said that he went to a couple of his old, um, a couple of like the, um, like the old haunts around town. And he actually saw somebody from high school and, you know, so he got to do that part of it, you know, um, by himself, which I think is, pr it was probably needed. Like, I think I would have felt like a, a little bit like a third, like an extra wheel if I had stayed and was just doing like all the family stuff with him. Um, so I think that's good that he got that time and it, it gave me a chance to kind of get home and regroup. So, um, got home on Wednesday evening, pretty late. Um, but I'm so glad that I parked my car at the airport and didn't do the whole like hitched a ride or had to get like a really expensive Uber and wait for all that stuff. Like it was so nice just to be in my own car and like get home relatively quickly. Um, I, he, I was even thinking like, oh, maybe I'll take, cause they have the train that'll take you from the airport to downtown. And then from downtown there, there's a station or a stop, like not too far from my house, but I couldn't imagine schlepping all my, you know, just, I, I don't think I could do that unless it was like early, like I had a really early flight and had the whole day, but trying to do that at night, it just doesn't sound like my cup of tea. So got home and said hi to Apollo. He flipped. <laughs> he flipped out. It was kind of dark in here. And so, and I think he was already kind of sleeping because he kind of like walked out of my roommate's room, kind of like, what was that noise? You know, because he heard me come in and he kind of just like, he ran up to me, but it took him like a minute to like realize who I was. Like he's kind of sniffing around. And then once he did, he just like barreled into me. I sat down on the couch and I was just like, okay, like stop. Like he was just like licking me and freaking out. And like, he's a handsy dog with his little paws. So like he like paws at you when he wants you to like pet him or get close to him. But his little nails, I swear, no matter how much I take him to go get them clipped and I, I've done it once a month since I got him to go get his nails clipped and I've asked them the past couple times like go as short as you can because they're like little razor blades and he'll like he'll get me a, sometimes like he'll get me on the cheek and I'm like ow and he's just wants to like love you you know but oh he gets me so he was just full-on attacking me at that point but he did calm down and we were able to go to bed just fine um and then yeah, the next day, right back to work, bright and early. Um, and it's a new job for me. So it was kind of, it felt kind of weird. It was almost like I was starting over, you know, because between being sick and, and uh, being gone, it was just like, I feel like my first couple weeks there have just been kind of chopped up, you know, like I haven't had like a consistent full week. Um, but it was good. I kind of got right back into the swing of things. It was fine. Um and then, you know, and then two days of that and then right into the weekend, which here we are. So it was a whirlwind <laughs> trip, but so much fun. I had an excellent time. The whole time I was there, I was like, I'm moving here. Like, I don't see what people, what the appeal is of Colorado when you have so many trees. There's so, I mean, people think that like, you know, if you haven't been to like Denver, you think that it's like in the mountains and it's not, it's in the plains. And so driving through like these towns and cities where like the, the forestry and the trees are just so dense and like you, you're on the highway and it's just trees on either side of you and you can't really see off into the distance. It's just, that's not, that's not what I'm used to. And it's just, it looked so lush because it had been, you know, it's been, I guess it's been a pretty dry season out there. Like they had like a pretty rough drought. So they were also kind of surprised that, you know, I came on not only a really beautiful weekend, but it was like one of the few weekends that they also got, or weeks that they also got some moisture, but the trees were just soaking it up and they were just like extra bright green. And then you hear the ocean, you know, in the distance, it's just like, ugh. like you don't get that in Colorado. We just have like flat, flatness, <laughs> um, but until, you know, until you look West and you have those gorgeous mountains, but I wish that we had more of that kind of lushness in the actual like city or town, you know, um, maybe I just need to move to the mountains, but, <laughs> but it was absolutely gorgeous. It was beautiful. I had an amazing time. Uh, my buddy was such a good host. I mean, 
I, I need to double check with him to make sure that we're all settled up, but we kind of just were like paying for stuff without, like, I don't know, we, we weren't doing everything halvesies. Like, I would get a meal, he'd get a meal. I got the tickets for the ferry and then the museum tickets, and then he would get this or that. So I just want to make sure that he feels like we're fair and square. But we were just kind of picking up the tab, you know, as as they approached without, like, making the whoever was serving us. Like, can you spit everything down the middle? We just, we I just kind of would step up and throw my card and be like, I'm getting this. Because, I mean, I didn't have to pay for any lodging. We didn't have to pay for a rental car. He bought the gas, so... It, I, I hope he feels like it was all fair. I'll have to double check with him just to make sure he didn't feel like he got gypped or anything. Um, but that's one of the, and that's also one of the reasons why I wanted to pick him up today just as a thank you because he drove me all the way to Boston and back. So, I mean, he was on the road for like two and a half hours and my place is like 40 minutes from the airport. So I didn't have to spend that, you know, here in Denver. So I didn't have to spend that much time getting him. So I just want to make sure that he he feels that it's all fair and square. But um, yeah, that was the trip. That was, it was, it was a blast. I will absolutely be going back. I already told him, like, you, you don't have the choice in the matter. Next time you come out here, you let me know. Because it was just, it was so much fun. I'd love to get, like, a bigger group out there. Um, but I kind of liked just having the, just, just he and I. It was kind of nice. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm back. I'm here. I'm still kind of like, oh, so I think... While I was there, I did not feel ill at all. You know, I felt a little fatigued, but that's about it. And I'm thinking that my body was just like, all right, we're in survival mode right now. So set all your set all your feelings aside. I mean, I had like, I would have a little bit of a cough here and there, just like hacking up stuff. But then, uh-oh, uh-oh, sirens. Um, but then when I got back, it was almost like things picked up a little bit where they left off. So I don't know if it was just like, my body's just recovering from the travel and stuff, but I started to feel a little bit tired and I was like, do I have a fever? No, I don't, I double checked. But I was just almost like, it felt like I almost like regressed a little bit just dealing with like the, the travel of it all and just being away. So I took some more medicine just to make sure I'm nipping anything in the bud. Um, I think I'm fine. I think I'm just over, over analyzing the situation, but I am still kind of coughing up some nastiness. So I just took some Mucinex. Um, but yeah, so that was the trip. Um, and then I got back to all of these. I was really hoping to get all of these shipments in before I left. But of course, like with shipping delays and stuff, it all showed up like the, the day or two after I had gone. But I had a Diamond Art Club um, shipment that I was expecting. Mooney made these custom trays that I ordered from August. And then... Um, some DP with sparklers drills and one other thing. What else was I, what else did I have to unbox? I had like a whole stack of stuff. I still need to edit the video. So right when I got home that next day, um, I was like, oh wait, no, no. It was that night after I like basically just cuddled the heck out of Apollo. I filmed that unboxing cause I'm impatient and I, you know me, I, I, I couldn't just like let those packages sit a day longer. Um, so it's, I will make sure that that gets posted either um, before or shortly, a couple days after this goes up. I'm gonna try to get this all edited in live in a single day. So fingers crossed, you'll see this soon. Um, but yeah, um, hold on just a second. Okay, uh, something I learned is my computer has been struggling with, um, or my, yeah, my computer, I airdrop my videos over to my computer so I can edit them before I post them. And I found that airdropping super long videos, like a ton of data, it it just struggles and it'll sometimes fail. And so um, I've learned now, like usually around the 20 or 30 minute mark, just to hit stop really quickly so it saves it as a separate file. That way they're in more manageable pieces uh, when I airdrop them. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how I can like plug my iPhone into my my Mac and just transfer them through a hard line. But I tried doing that the other day and I couldn't figure out how to access the um, 
access the video files. So the only way that I know how to do it is to airdrop them to myself. So if you know, let me know, because <laughs> if I could find a way to do it through Hardwire, then I don't have to manage the size of the files. I mean, it should just work, so. Okay, there's that. Um, so I filmed that unboxing. Now I don't even remember what all was there. It was Mooney Made Trays, it was the DP with Sparklers, and it was, I think, one other thing. Oh, um, it was the stickers. I got the, the shipment from Ivy Dolamore from her Etsy shop. Um, she has, like, prints and stickers and all sorts of fun stuff. I think she even has jewelry on there with her some of her images is in, like, earring form. So if you're interested, like I said, the links will be down there, but... I have been trying to find some more creative ways to, or some more ways to support artists other than just like purchasing the diamond paintings. Um, because you never know, like, I'm, I'd be curious to know, like, what's their cut? You know, like, what are they really making off of each kit sold? And is it enough to sustain them? Um, and so if I really like an artist, I'm not going to do this with every artist because it would it's beyond my financial means to not only buy the diamond painting, but then go through and like, try to buy other products from every artist so I'm I'm choosy with who I who I am shopping from but um Ivy Dolomore is just one of my favorites and I love so there's so many pieces of artwork on on her site that I really hope Diamond Art Club makes into diamond paintings but in the meantime I got a bunch of sticker sets and these guys um and then I'll probably be placing another order for a couple of prints and then the other person that I found that I really like um, is You May Art. Um, they have a website. I don't even think it's an Etsy. I think it's just a website. And they have prints and then they have bookmarks. And I was like, oh, that'll be awesome. I can um, cut out some images from, you know, off the bookmarks or something and incorporate those into my journal or into my diamond painting logbook. But they're double sided bookmarks. So if I cut the shapes out of one side, it's going to ruin the other image. So I just don't know if. I'm, I might just say that's fine, like I'm willing to sacrifice whatever's on the other side or just get two sets that way I have, you know, I can work with one one image and not worry about sacrificing the other side or just wait until maybe they have some stickers or something else I can utilize. But I've been looking at Yume Art's site as well. Um, but if you know of any others, you know, I know a lot of artists have like um, Etsy shops and stuff, but I'd ideally be... I'd like to find some sticker sets. So if you know of some Diamond Art Club artists that have like sticker sets and other fun stuff, make sure to share that with me because um, I'm hope I'm looking to do that. Like basically when I go to open a kit and start working on it, like I just started, um, which I guess we're getting into diamond painting now, but um, I just started working on um, Where the Fun Never Ends by Mandy Manzano. So I'm going to go see what else I can snag from her and maybe if she's got some sticker sets or they have some sticker sets I can get some to include on my logbook for my finish. We'll see. So yeah, if that's something that you've been curious about, like how else can I support these artists? Just see, you know, what other products they have, whether it be prints or stickers or jewelry or I know a lot of them have Etsy shops. So take a look at that. But um, yeah, as far as diamond painting goes, I've gone off the deep end. <laughs> Um, let me shake this real quick. Um, I, I ended up, I ended up kidding up like two more projects. So now I'm at four, I currently have four quote unquote whips. Um, reason being is, oh, another, another package that I got that I have been waiting for. Um, and I actually recorded that video right before I left. It was, um, my jaded gem shop canvas so that that's already up that unboxing is already up so take a look at it it's senorita by henry clive um i could not i said in the video oh i'll wait till maybe the first of the year because this is going to be a long-term project i could not not work on that kit it was it's stunning it's beautiful i needed it in my life immediately so um yesterday was that yesterday or the day before i just got home and i was like you know what I'm not going to worry about filming it and feel obligated to like, you know, do the filming piece of it. 
I want to work on it and I want to kit it up and I don't necessarily feel like filming it. So I just, I just uh, kitted that whole thing up and I'm kind of glad I didn't film it because Jade uses lots of small baggies of diamonds, which is something I'll definitely mention when I do a whip and chat with that canvas. Um, but there is like, there'd be some that were like relatively full bags and they're that those heat sealed bags, kind of like Diamond Art Club bags. There'd be some that were kind of full and then you'd have a whole run of them that each one, even though they were all the same DMC, would have like 30 drills in each bag. And so rather than having one bag with 120 drills, you'd have like four bags of 30, you know? And so it made the kitting up process go very slow uh, because you're cutting open a ton of bags. It also made it a little bit um, haphazard because you'd think you got all of them because they wouldn't even all be in like the same strand. They'd be kind of like a little scatter shot. So, um, you'd think that you had kitted up a color and then you find another random bag and you have to go through and like figure out which container it is and grab that and hopefully there's room for it. If not, you've got to create a new, a new container and scoot the rest of them down. And this is a big kit. It's a 80 by 110. So it actually took three of my little, or not my little, but my 60 piece container thingies, this guy, it took three of those um, to kit that whole thing up. So it was quite the undertaking. I'm kind of glad I didn't film it because that would have been a very long video or it would have just been one real long time lapse. Um, let's see, 42. So I have that going now. Um, so I have my first section of it done. And like I said, I'll discuss it more when I do my whip and chat, but so far so good, I'm happy. Um, and then um, I have Cauldron of Myrrh, which you're looking at right now. I have my Red Gate of Hongo in Snow, which is that one from uh, Summer with the Masters that I still have in sitting around. <laughs> um, and then, let's see, that was it for that one. Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. Um, and then I have, um, I decided I wanted to, I needed to work on another gift kit. So I did the kitting up already. You've seen it, um, or you can go see it if you haven't. It's, it's up. And that was Where the Fun Never Ends by Mandy Manzano. So I kitted that whole thing up and I actually started working on that um, today as well. So I have a section of that done. Um, so I think my game plan is to do two, one, one, and then if I'm feeling saucy, I'll do the the Red Gate of Hongo and Snow because I do need to get that done so I can free up that storage space. Um, so two, and I mean that in sections. So two sections of Cauldron of Myrrh and then one of each of the other ones. So that, that'll that be the rotation as far as like my time spent because I have two months to finish this. And with this row, I'll probably be able to get this the rest of this row done. It'll take me about a week to do each row essentially. So I've got half a week, one, two, three, four. So I've got about four and a half weeks of work left and we're two weeks into the into the event. So yeah, so I should even have some time to spare. So as long as I can keep that pace up, if not a little bit faster, then I should be good. And then I'll intermix that with a section from each of those other canvases just to keep those moving forward as well. They don't have any timelines, except I, I would like to get where the fun never ends done by Christmas. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. I have a bunch of other Christmas uh, gift kits that I want to give as gifts, but they don't have like a set deadline. Like I haven't promised or guaranteed someone like, you'll have this done by this time. So I don't, I had that in my head, like get them all done by Christmas. Uh, number seven is art. Okay, cool. Um, but I don't, it's just, I don't think that's very practical, especially because like where the fun never ends is a big hit. And then um, my aunt is in town. Um, so I hung out with her um, on Thursday. So I, to, how do I explain this? A lot of ants in my family. Okay, so I have um, my aunt that wanted yellow Frida. She lives here in Colorado. My other aunt was in town and she stayed with aunt number one. So they were together in the same, on, under the same roof. <laughs> so, um, so I went to go visit both of them um, because my one aunt from out of town was there visiting. So I got to go see her. And while I was there, 
the aunt that wanted yellow Frida, I gave that to her. Remember, I said I was going to try to give it to her before Christmas, so um, I brought it, and uh, she freaked out. She was crying. It was very sweet, um, but she loved it. She absolutely loved it, and my aunt from out of town, she's one of the ones that um, had tech sent me a text and was like, I didn't know you did diamond painting. And so I had asked her, like, think about what kind of style you like. And if you want one, I'll make you one. And so I, um, she was like, okay, I like, here we go. I like kind of Thomas Kincaid landscapey scenes. And, um, if you've listened to some of my ripping chats <laughs> before, I don't like that style. I, it's not that I like strongly dislike it. It's just not my style. I wouldn't hang it in my own home. I don't know if working on those kits would be particularly interesting to me, but for the sake of making something that my aunt will really love, because I, I could tell that she was like, I want one, you know, because my other aunt's sitting there like having a conniption <laughs> over her yellow Frida, and she was like, let's take a picture with it. So I took a picture with her in it, and she's like beaming. Um, so... The aunt that was visiting said she likes that kind of Thomas Kin Kincaid style, and I was going to just do a Distracted by Diamonds kit for her. Um, I was just going to try to get, like, her style and then kind of get as close as possible, because I think those are really good kits for gifts because the renderings are so detailed, um, and they just look very close to like the original artwork. I think they just do a fantastic job, but there's not really anything like that on the Distracted by Diamond site. So I was like, here's Diamond Art Club site. Take a look. Cause she also said, Ooh, I also like Christmas scenes. I'm like, ah, <sighs> another, another type of artwork that I don't love. So I was like, Oh my. And so that night, so I sent her the link. She didn't She didn't pick anything out on the spot. She was like, oh, I'll take a look. I'll let you know. And that night I was flipping through the, um, the Diamond Art Club site and I was like, oh, I know she's going to pick this one. And it's like a Chuck Penson Christmas, like Christmas, like winter scene. And it's like a carriage with the horses pulling up to a church. And there's like a bridge with like wreaths at the end. And I was just like, I know she's going to pick this this kit because I, it just, to me, I'm just like, ugh. Like, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. You know, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is, in my eyes, and sorry, I don't mean to offend. This is just personal, personal preference. Everyone's got their style, right? I just find those, that type, that artwork to be a little tacky, to be honest. It's just like, I don't know. <laughs> it's just not for me. Um, and maybe that's because... I used to see a lot of that artwork in my aunt's homes and you know that that was like that was kind of like the cool artwork I just remember Thomas Kincaid's name getting thrown around a lot when they would talk about like oh have you seen it like I don't know I think it's just ingrained in me like don't like that um so of course she texted me I love this one and it's that exact kit I was like of course you do and it's big it's like a 90 <laughs> 90 something by 60 something it's like, of course you want that one. So I ordered it. I got that one and then a couple others that, that have just been on my wish list for a while. I got Polani by uh, Micah Jelena. I really like the color scheme on that one. And then I got um, Hush, Batman's Hush. Um, that's another massive kit. Um, okay, I'm looking for number nine, which is number nine. Um, that's another massive kit. But I was trying to think of one to do for my roommate, um, Christmas adjacent. You know, it's, it's certainly not going to get done by Christmas. Maybe next Christmas or maybe his birthday next August. But um, he is into the Justice League and I know nothing about the Justice League. I And so I texted him and I was like, um, hey, what do you think about this? He's like, oh, that one's actually really cool. He's like, I didn't know that they did... Um, diamond diamond dots <laughs> he just calls them all diamond dots um it's like I didn't know they did Justice League diamond dots I'm like yeah they did they did like a licensing with um with is that Marvel I think is it I don't know or is that DC no it's DC um I think oh my god <laughs> um, but uh he's like oh I didn't know that and I was like yeah and um th they've got a bunch of different images but this was like and the reason I sent that 
particular one because it it's on crazy discount. It's like, I don't know, I think the original price was like 119 USD or 119.99 and it's down to like 40 something USD. So I was like, if he likes it, great because it's like the cheapest of those those licensed, those DC licensed images. It's like the least expensive one, even though it's gonna take me a very long time to complete it. Um, so I was like, cool. So I got that for him. I got the Christmas, Christmas item, <laughs> that Christmas canvas. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to give it too, too much shade, but um, yeah, I got that one for my aunt and then um, I got Polani for myself. So. I think I'm going to have a lot of kits that I'm, you know, going to be working on that are for kind of to give to other people, which is kind of, I like, I like it. I like being able to do that and have, you know, people appreciate it and are interested. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to keep myself pretty busy with those. And then, um, if there's a Christmas event that I can participate in with that Chuck Pinson, then boom, like double duty. Um, if not, I'll just work on it just to work on it um so yeah I'll, i'm gonna try to rotate between something i'm doing for me slash an event and then something i'm doing as a gift and rotate through those um but the one that just keeps making it seem like i have a lot more to do is that red gate of hongo and snow just because i haven't touched it since like july so i just need to hunker down and get it done um the one thing I will say about Jaded Gem Shop early on is it is confetti heavy. It took me two times as long, maybe a little bit longer, to do one section on that canvas than it does with something like this. Um, it's just very, very confetti heavy. Is that all of my... Am I working on nines? Okay. Is that all of my nines? Looks like it is. Yay! You get to go back in your container. Um, so... That That is going to be a long, very long-term project, I can tell, because it's huge and it's very intensely confetti. So if you're the type of person that likes a lot of color blocking or that's how you get through your bigger projects, I would say get a smaller kit from Jaded Gem Shop, like a smaller size, and see how you do with it. Or um, if, you're, if you're not partial to rounds or squares, go with a... Um, let's see, seven, eight, okay, perfect. Go with a round, because those just tend to move a little bit faster anyway, um, just to see if you like the style. But from what I've seen, um, Katie over at Diamonds and Washi had her first finish from Jaded Gem Shop, and it was a relatively small kit, but it looked like a, it was confetti crazy. And the one that I'm looking at right now is also confetti crazy. There's some sections of color blocking in like the background, but any area that has like, some detail, it just goes right into a lot of confetti. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I think it's going to really enhance the detail of that image and really bring that lace, um, the lace work. Check out that unboxing if you haven't seen it. Bring the lace work to life um, because there's so much color change and detail in the original image that I think you kind of have to do it with a lot of confetti in order for it to come out. I'm just curious to see like, Oh my goodness, how long is this gonna take me? Um, okay, we're also done with uh, with eight, which was S. Do you see any more S's? I do not. Okay, I think we're good. Cool, we're really cranking through this. Um, so yeah, um, that kit's just gonna be one that I could see that taking me ooh, months, months and months to complete that. It's just, it's. I think that one section took me like Oh, like three hours per individual section and there's a lot of sections so um because you pretty much have to single place the entire thing um with the exception of like a few areas so um okay let's move on to r which i believe is seven yep perfect and then i'm gonna go ahead and i've only got a little bit in here so let's go ahead and bulk that out so we got some a lot of r's to work with here um so those are kits um and my intentions for those so now i've got the four going but i'm going to rotate through and just do some a couple sections or a section on each depending on what i'm trying to get done the fastest 
That way I'm making forward progress on all of them. And then um, as soon as I have a finish, uh, which will probably be Cauldron of Myrrh, I'd say will be the first one to be done. Um, then I'll probably pause on kidding up something new until I have, um, I'm back down to two. So I'd like to finish two kits before I kit up another one. And I, I, I said in my last, I think it was like my, a kit in chat, um, kidding up in chat that I did like, well, I'm out of storage space, so that's it for me. Well, yeah, until I go on Amazon and buy another storage container. But I can't like just, I can't just like have every one of my canvases kitted up. That's a little insane. So I've got, I've got to like put the pot, I have to put the brakes on it at some point. I think this is a good stopping point is to have these four um, and try to get a couple of them cranked out before I start opening anything else or start kidding up anything else. I'd like to do get where the fun never ends done and then by that time hopefully by Christmas who knows and then by that time I'll have that Chuck Pinson in in because that I mean that'll get here in like a week probably from Diamond Art Club um, then I can maybe that'll be the next one after I get um, where the fun never ends done you know do one gift canvas and then move into the next one so that might be how I approach it. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I don't think I have it in me to have five kids. Go it, at a certain point, you're just spread. I think I'm spreading myself too thin. So it's like, it, eventually it's going to feel like nothing is getting done because I'm like working on all these different kits at once. So it's just like, there's not a lot of forward progress on anything, you know? Like I, I like, I like the feeling of like getting a, a couple sections knocked out and like actually seeing the image come to life. But if you're just touching like a project once a week for one section, it's that I could see that getting frustrating because like it's like I'm doing all this work for I'm doing a bunch of diamond painting, but like all these canvases look the same at the end of the day um, or week to week. Like I'm not seeing the big jump. So and I don't want to burn myself out either. I'm I'm gonna keep an eye on like switching up so much even between three or four canvases switching that up so frequently because two of them are squares one's around the color palettes are vastly different between between the kits styles are different so i don't want it to feel like overwhelming um sometimes you kind of get into the groove with the kit and you like memorize the colors and you kind of have a feel for like drill placement and stuff and like oh i can tell that this is gonna be next or like you know, I don't know. I feel like I kind of start to know the canvas as I'm working on it. Um, and I'm able to like, like I said, just like, I know right away that, you know, F is number, is number 40 and it's this kind of DMC or like, don't forget that I made this enhancement. So whenever I get to this color, swap it out for like a sparkler or something, you know? So you start to learn those little nuances of your kit that you're working on. But I feel like if I'm constantly changing it, I'm just going to be in this in this mode of like, wait, what's going on? Why did I do that? Oh, right, 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 I forgot. Like, like with um, where the fun never ends, I'm making, <clears throat> sorry, I'm making a lot of adjustments with sparklers. I placed a pretty big order with DP with sparklers. And so I'm doing some weird stuff on that canvas to enhance it. Um, and so I don't want to like lose track of like, oh, that's right, you're alternating between this sparkler and this regular drill or you replace that with an AB, so don't forget to grab that. So I need to be mindful of all that stuff. And then, uh, but on the flip side, I couldn't just do that Senorita, that Jaded Gem Shop, because that's the trouble I got myself into with Red Gate of Hongo and Snow is like only working on a super confetti heavy canvas. It burns me out because I'm not, confetti is not my favorite thing. Like I would much prefer to do like, I think they call it color blocking confetti, where you have like chunks, not not wide swaths of color blocking that can get monotonous, but like chunks of color blocking. Like, let's say you have like six colors in a section, you know, <laughs> I kind of like that. So, um, so a ton of confetti is not, and only doing that, that's too much for me. I don't think I, I'd get a lot of enjoyment out of it, even though that image is gorgeous, that might, that actually might pull me through, the fact that it's so beautiful. <laughs> like, I have to see this through to the end, it's gorgeous. Um, and 
Oh, there's no special drills on that Jaded Gem Shop one either, which I was kind of looking at it to see if I could like identify where I might want to do something, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to just leave it as is. I don't think it needs to be dressed up um, because the colors are pretty vibrant. Um, and I just, with that style of artwork, I don't know where it would make sense to do that. My eyes always end up like going for, like looking at the lips is usually where I put drills if I don't know where else to put them, specialty drills. So who knows, I might do her, her red lips in something. Um, she's also got um, a fan in her hand. It's this really pretty fan, um, but it's so confettied. It's confettied to the gods. So I don't, I don't even know which symbols to, like, it just, it's not, there's no clear answers, you know, it's not, like, you look at this and you're like, oh, okay, like, I'll do some, I'll replace this little chunk here, like, it's not like that, it's just all a mix. So I think I'm just going to leave it as is, maybe do the lips, because those aren't super confettied, um, but who knows, we'll see, I might just leave the whole thing as is. So um, that's what's going on in my diamond painting life. Um, and you got a little update on how the trip went. Um, Apollo's doing great. He actually, I actually booked his appointment in six weeks to have his you know what's you know what it. Um, so, um, I'm sure he's gonna love that. Um, but it's a Saturday, so I will have the all of Saturday and Sunday to kind of console him through those trying times. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see. I'm already like thinking forward to like, what's my next trip going to be? Because um, I have my nine, my nine floating holidays will be issued in December. So I'm like, maybe I'll do like a little spring trip or something like that. I'm not sure. So I'm trying to come up with ideas. Um, probably stay within the US or Canada. I've never been to Canada. So maybe a trip up to Canada. Um, I was also thinking maybe Alaska. I don't know. I want to start, I want to start doing some more like, like fun trips. Nothing, nothing is super crazy. Like, of course I want to travel in, internationally, but nothing like so that soon, like this spring that in my head that requires a lot more planning. Um, but I would like to do something. I was thinking, I don't know what, when hurricane season is or like when is a good season to go to Florida, but I'd love to go to the Everglades or um, Key West. I've never been to Key West and I really want to go there. I just don't know what's a good time. Um, but I'm thinking like February or March taking a few days um, or a week and going and doing something fun and start incorporating some more travel because I do like a road trip or a one trip a year typically is what I do like out of state and then everything else is just camping and stuff but I want to start experiencing some more some new places even if they're here in the U.S. like I I just did the East Coast, but that was just Rhode Island, um, or it was Rhode Island, which was beautiful, but I've never seen New York. Um, I'd like to see Maine. I'd like to see Vermont. So even like going back to the East Coast and doing like a different part, like that could be a fun trip too that I would be absolutely willing to do. Because um, I did Pacific Northwest last year. Um, so I don't know. And I've also never been to like I guess I have been to New Orleans. Um, it was for work, though. Um, so I'd probably like to see that from the lens of like a a, um, a vacation or not someone that's going to a work conference. Um, so, you know, that, that part of the country. And then, like I said, I've never been to Canada. I'd love to go. So anyway, if you have any suggestions or if you have some trips planned that you want to share, let me know. Or you, maybe you live somewhere that you're like, you know, we could get some, we could get some of Anthony's tourism money. Come, come out to wherever, you know. Um, I'm open to suggestions of like favorite spots or like if you live in a part of the country that's really cool. Because mainly I've just been to like, well, I have been to a number of states, but mainly west, like Colorado and west. So I'm always, almost always headed west to like California or Arizona or New Mexico. Um, it's rare that I head east, so I kind of want to see that part of the country. But I think that'll do it. I think I'll leave you at that. I've I've got plenty to go here, definitely enough to make this a very long whip and chat. And I kind of gave you all my updates. And so um, this will be kind of hopefully right in that hour sweet spot. I'll have to go back and double check. But I'm going to try to get this section done. 
um, tonight um, and then move into this one um, either tonight or tomorrow just depending on what the night what the night holds. Um, it's still fairly early. It's not super late or anything. So I might be able to get my two sections done tonight. That way I can go back to um, Senorita and um, and work on that section and then rotate into where the fun never ends. And like I said, I'm just going to kind of do that until either it doesn't make sense to do it anymore or I get bored or the deadline for finishing my drills and chills canvas like comes up and I'm like, oh no, I, I am not as close as I thought I'd be. So I, at some point I might transition to only working on Cauldron of Myrrh. Originally I was like, I'm going to do uh, two, two uh, Festival of Witches and Drills and Chills canvases. I can get two done in a month, which yes, I could if they were the only things I was working on. And while I do love Ivy Dolomore and I love this kit, um, there's some other ones that aren't like themed to that event that I wanted to work on. And like I said, the gift kits are kind of priority too, is getting some stuff done for friends and family. So yeah, the, the event kits almost kind of uh, took us a, a back, a second seat to, uh, to the gift kits. But, um, but there's also the timestamp, like you have to finish your canvas for these events at, by a certain deadline. So that kind of creates that sense of urgency for these. So it's kind of like weighing my options. The one that doesn't have any sort of deadline and the one that's going to be the most time consuming is the Jaded Gem Shop one. But that's just self, that's just me loving that that image so much. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. This, one, this one's for me. Um, so yeah, I it's gorgeous. If you haven't gotten a chance to check out Jaded Gem Shop, but like I said, all the links for everything actually... I won't put the link for that one because we're not technically working on that or working with it. Um, that's not what this. That's not what I've been working on today. But go check it out. You can you can also go to the unboxing if you want the link or just you know do a quick Google search and you can find it. Um, but yeah, Jaded Gem Shop has some really cool images. You just just prepare yourself for the confetti because it is real. She may have some because she has some images on there that are like kind of cartoon a style and a, just few color like it's not super color heavy or detailed so i'm curious if those will be rendered with minimal um if they'll be more color blocking focused because there's just not a lot going on or if she's found a way to confettify those ones too i'm, I'm curious to know like what her if confetti is just her style of rendering regardless or if she has some more like I don't even want to say beginner friendly, but like uh, color blocking friendly uh, kits because it'd be nice to have a mix. I'd like to be able to shop from her knowing that it's not going to be like a huge, uh, a big undertaking because of the confetti. Like maybe there's some images that I could like get through in a couple of weeks, you know, depending on the size and style. So we'll see. I'm curious to see how that shop continues to evolve. I feel like she's putting a ton of work into it right now. Um, and I'm curious to see like what other products I know she's doing diamond painting pens now but um yeah I'm just having a blast kind of following along with her journey through being you know a business owner um, because she puts a lot of heart and passion but anyway okay so that's that let me actually let me just finish this while I say my thank yous so thank you all so much for continuing to check out my videos I feel like um Things have kind of taken off a little bit from like a subscriber standpoint and not that I try to put like a ton of focus on that but it is nice to see um, some people like joining the joining our little family here and and enjoying my videos and taking value out of them I think um, you know at the time of this posting I'm somewhere in the 400s and you know I always say, oh, I don't want to set goals, but I'm that's my, my that is my personality type. So I was like, in my head, I'm like, it'd be so cool to to see the number 500 pop up on there by the end of the year. Um, that would just be, I don't know, it'd be so amazing to know that that many people are like finding joy in um, this content. So um, I'm kind of like it's so ecstatic that. I'm so close, you know, I'm like inching my way towards that or you know, not, not even inching, I'm moving fairly quickly towards that. 
and we still have a, a few months left to go here in the year. Um, so we'll see. I'm keeping, I'm keeping a little, I'm keeping one eye on it, you know, I just want to kind of see how it continues to evolve and develop. So don't forget to share this content with friends, family members, anyone that you think might take some joy out of it. Um, I try to do, you know, it's been a little bit of quiet because I was out of town, um, but you'll at least get an unboxing from me once a week. I can, I can guarantee that left, right, and center because they're already filmed and <laughs> scheduled all the way through the rest of the year. So you'll always have an unboxing on Tuesday from me in one form or fashion. Um, if I can swing it, then, or, or if, if, um, if it makes sense, if I got like a special shipment in, or I have an unboxing that I'm like super excited to share, like the Mooney made trays and stuff, then that'll be kind of a special edition extra unboxing that you'll get throughout the week. Um, but those are just based on like, oh, I got something cool in that I want to share. Um, so you'll you'll see those pop up. I you know ideally I'm like I'd like to do whip and chats uh, once a week, um, at least. Some, or some sort of and chat. So like kidding up, kidding down, working on my whip, something like that once a week. But um, life is life. Um, I have a, just as many winter activities as I do summer. I thought initially, I was like, oh, things will slow down in the winter. And then I can really like, you know, crank, you know, make sure that I'm consistent with content from like a whip and chat standpoint. But I'm like, wait, I like, I do cross country skiing a lot. I still do snowshoeing. Um, I guess not a lot of cross country, but enough on the weekends. And now that I have Apollo, I've got a little snow bunny. Like, of course, I'm going to be taking him up to go bounce around in the snow as much as I can. So I'm like, eh, it seems like you would be quiet. It would be quieter in the winter, but I think I'm going to have just as much going on. Um, but I'll do everything I can to give you kind of life updates once a week. Um, that, that's what I'd like to do. Um, but that schedule is kind of flexible. Um, so just keep that in mind. But I'll try to do everything that I can. I feel like I'm always fussing with diamond painting in one form or fashion. So it's just a matter of like, you know what? People want, probably wouldn't mind an update or would like an update. So while you're doing this thing, you know, just film it. Even if it's not, you know, specifically like a kidding up or working on a whip, like the, um, this weekend I'd like to reorganize my little storage drawers because I've just been adding a lot of stuff to my collection and it's getting a little unruly. So I'm like, maybe I could just prop up the camera, you know, and just, just organize my stuff and, and film it as a whip and chat or like an organization of my diamond painting accessories and chat. So I don't know, let me know if that's something that you'd be okay with. Um, of course it, when, when it makes sense or when I can figure it out, I'll be recording as I'm doing my outdoorsy stuff. Um, if you are fairly new and you haven't seen it, I did a, a hike and chat um, about a month ago, I think. Um, I actually just filmed clips of me and Apollo going on a hike um, around the mountains and I showed everyone like views and scenery and stuff and it got a lot of positive response. So I'm, I'm glad that that is a format that people are cool with. Um, because it mix, it blends like the two things that I really love, like outdoors and diamond painting. Um, it blends those two kind of activities and hobbies together. It's just uh, logistically, it's not easy because I have to have one hand on the leash, Apollo's leash, trying to keep the camera steady, um, huffing and puffing because I'm like hiking and out of breath and stuff. So it's it's hard to pull off um, and but it's a blast like I I will keep trying to do it so any other suggestions that you have to feel free to let me know but um yeah I'll uh, I'll let you go thank you so much for watching like I said don't forget to like subscribe um, but also don't forget to share this stuff you know if you have friends or other people in the community that you diamond paint with um, and you you know you kind of stumble upon this channel and you're, you're enjoying it that's that could that's such a huge way to support myself and other creators is just hitting that share button shooting a text or a facebook message saying hey check this person out so um i really appreciate it thank you again i hope you enjoyed our little chat and um we'll catch you on the next one happy placing and have an excellent day weekend all that good stuff bye bye bye, -bye.